yeah, we're going to be talking about sales charts. Uh, but I got to clear the desk first. What the hell is all this crap? Oh, this Zelda Collector's Edition Yahtzee? What? All right. Uh, these four Poe sister paintings, Ocarina of Time. Okay, I don't... Why are these sitting here? I don't understand. I have these two officially licensed Zelda sweatshirt jacket things? I I don't get it. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? A Zelda collector's coin? Breath of the Wild from E3 2016? Now that's a collector's item right there. I don't know what that's doing here. And a charge and play clutch from HyperX? 6,000 milliamp bo like battery power beast? I guess that's one way to expand your uh, portable play when you don't have an outlet. All right, all right cool. I don't know what, what this is all doing here. What is this? Oh, well, this is one of those new $100 Fusion Pro controllers. It doesn't have rumble. Kind of a disappointment. But otherwise, I mean, it's got the best D-pad in the industry, uh, at least for Switch. So there is that. And hey, it's got a white faceplate. Thing. Wow. All right, whatever. I don't know what the hell it's doing. Was this Gamer Christmas? Did someone just drop a bunch of presents into my lap? This four-in-one mini charging dock. Oh, you can charge four uh, Joy-Con off of this. So if you're someone with like, a bunch of Joy-Con, that's kind of useful. Why the hell is all this stuff here? All right. Those are just a sample of the products we are giving away during E3 2021. $3,500 worth of stuff. New partners joining every day. We put out a grand plus of our own money into those giveaways. We have consoles being given away. All that stuff you've seen. Games, games, games. So many games being given away. Physical copies and digital copies. Lots of great stuff. Switch lights. You know the deal. We have a lot going on. Be sure to tune into our E3 coverage starting on June 12th. Starting with a two-hour pre-show that begins our giveaway festivities. Along with a whole bunch of other stuff and special guests. It's going to be a good time. Hope to see all of you there. All right, now uh, we're going to be talking about sales charts, specifically with Amazon. Now, we're focusing on Amazon US. I have looked at sales charts in other territories, and for the most part, the sales charts line up. Essentially, the charts are close enough country to country with, with, with some slight variants that we can really just go off of one and call it good. And since I am based in the United States, obviously the sales I care about the most happen in, well, the United States. And we're going with Amazon because they are the world's largest online retailer. Supposedly, that's what <laughs> that's at least what the internet tells me. Uh, meaning that they're also going to be the largest online retailer for video games. And this gives us a good idea, a good a good landscape look at how Switch is doing because yes, we had the MPD report where Switch was dominating, but we don't really know how the games are doing. Uh, you know, in Japan, we have a better idea where Switch not only dominates there, but the games dominate. So we're going to look at the software. We're also going to look at the hardware to get an idea of how Switch hardware is doing. This is in totality for 2021. This has nothing to do with fiscal years. This is just calendar year 2021 to date. Here are the top 10 best-selling software on Amazon to date. Number one is Super Mario 3D World. At number two is Minecraft for PC. At number three is Ring Fit Adventure. At number four is New Pokemon Snap. At number five is Animal Crossing New Horizons. At number six is Just Dance 2021, the Switch edition. Uh, at number seven is Breath of the Wild. Still in the top ten. How the hell is that happening? At number eight, we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. At number nine, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Again, a Wii U game. Just, all right. At number ten, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Now, notably, Super Mario 3D All-Stars is likely going to fall off. These are just physical sales. These aren't digital codes. So this is just physical sales. And, yeah, Super Mario 3D All-Stars is going to fall off. They don't have any more physical copies. So it's one of those, hey, you know... If you you were like, where the hell is Monster Hunter Rise? Monster Hunter Rise is actually at number 11. Likely going to bump Super Mario 3D All-Stars off this list, along with all the additional Switch games coming out. But that's nine of the top ten best-selling games in 2021 so far, at least according to Amazon, are Switch games. And then the only one that's not is Minecraft. You know, the, the game that just keeps on selling. That is, wow. I Can, can we just stop for a moment and appreciate the evergreenness of Nintendo's titles. I mean, there's there's titles on here from 2017. We still have a fitness title and Ring Fit Adventure still blowing up. Uh, it, Super Mario 3D World just it's that's going to continue to do numbers. It's a Mario game and uh, Bowser's Fury mode. I'm sorry, might be the best mode in gaming. And did you know we have Mario Golf coming out? They dropped a Mario Golf trailer today. 
uh, that I'm not going to do an individual video on, but tune in tonight to a live stream that I'll have going on around 8, 8.30 uh, Central Time tonight. Uh, we will live react to that trailer. I've already watched it, uh, and I don't think there's enough information in it to do a, you know, a dedicated video to it, but doing a live reaction and talking about some of the stuff I'm most excited for because I'm really looking forward to Mario Golf. Also, Mitomo comes out, or Mitopia? Mitopia comes out. Mitomo and Mitopia. I, the me, 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 this. I Whatever. Uh, <laughs> that comes out later this week. I'm not as excited for that, although the Me Maker and it's crazy. Go download the demo if you just want to see the most coolest Me Maker ever. But yeah, software's killing it. And like, yeah, Returnal came out and it looks like Returnal on PlayStation 5. The sales aren't actually doing very well. Of course, some people will counter, well, who really owns a PlayStation 5? Okay, fine. Uh, but yeah, Re Returnal uh, doesn't appear to be doing too hot so far. And uh, really... If it's not a Nintendo game and it's not Minecraft, gaming in general, no, no, like we're selling hardware, but software is not really selling. Of course, I guess Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, that might be the first big one this year that's not for Nintendo. I don't know. Well, we'll have to wait and see. It's been kind of a slow start to the year if it's not Nintendo. Uh, and it's not like Nintendo had a bunch of bangers in the first half, but you know, it is what it is. Although Monster Hunter Rise, I mean, come on, let's just be honest. That is a banger. And that's not even in the top 10. That's how crazy Switch games are selling right now. All right, let's get into the hardware because, of course, Switch dominates. But it's interesting to see where individual hardware SKUs rank. Um, and obviously, you'll notice a trend here on Switch is massively outselling collectively everything. And it's not really even close. Uh, so at the number one hardware spot right now is the red box switch with the neon joy, you know, the neon red and blue joy cons. Uh, at number two is the standard edition PlayStation five at number three is the animal crossing switch at number four is the red box switch with gray joy cons at number five is the gray switch light at number six is the Xbox series S not X. Uh, at number seven is the switch light turquoise. At number eight is the PlayStation 5 All Digital Edition. And then at number nine is Switch Lite Coral. Unfortunately, the chart doesn't go big enough for me to get a top 10. Notice the Xbox Series X is not on here. The S is outselling the X. I think this is just because Microsoft is making more S units than Xs. And I'm not really sure why uh, the, the X to me would seem to be a more high demand system. But then also it's a hacker's dream, a, a emulator's dream is the S, you know? So maybe that's why it's also cheap. It costs as much as a standard Switch. Uh, but yeah, uh, you'll notice that that's, you know, what, seven of the top nine hardware spots are Switch, and the number one spot is Switch. Collectively, Switch is obviously crushing whatever numbers PlayStation 5 is doing, which PlayStation 5 is at a record launch pace. So it's kind of interesting to see PlayStation 5 is on a record launch pace for a console. Meanwhile, Switch is just casually spitting out more units than anything. It's starting to come back in stock at a lot of places, uh, and Switch just continues to outsell the competition. I've never seen... that. This is the interesting part. We are in the heyday of Switch, right? The Switch is peaking in sales right now, and yet a new generation of hardware launched in the middle of Switch peaking, and it doesn't seem to have like even put a dent into what Switch is doing. That's what's insane. The PlayStation 5 is on this chart. It's doing record numbers, and yet it can't touch the Switch. It can't even come close to touching the Switch. I mean, the cheaper PlayStation All Digital Edition is way down the list behind Switch lights. I mean, it's crazy to me to see how well Switch is doing. It, it, it just blows my mind because we're headed into, into E3, which is poised to be one of the biggest E3s maybe ever, especially if you're into Nintendo or into Microsoft. If you're into Sony stuff, obviously there will be some Sony games there. I'm presuming we'll see the Final Fantasy game from Square, uh, maybe some Final Fantasy VII remake stuff. We're going to see games going to PlayStation factually at this show from third parties, Ubisoft, Square Enix, Sega, etc. But Sony themselves is not there. So seeing a lot of their exclusive um, Sony-made games, probably not going to happen there. Will probably happen at an event, maybe a little bit later after at a you know at one of their digital events or maybe they'll wait all the way up for PSX I don't know and what's interesting here is that Microsoft obviously bought out what they have 30 plus studios under their wing now after the Zenimax purchase was approved so they're going to have so much stuff to show and I've seen some things out there from even popular PlayStation podcasts where they kind of are worried a little bit 
about Sony. Yeah, Sony announced uh, that they have 25 exclusives in the work. 12 of them are new IPs. Sony's going to bring the exclusive games. The thing is, that was always the one thing they could tout over Microsoft was, hey, forget the services, forget this. You come to us for exclusive games. But now if Microsoft with Game Pass has 30 plus studios releasing a bunch of bangers uh, over the next you know five years, that could put a dent into things, especially since it's much cheaper to get these games because of Game Pass on an Xbox or on a PC or, heck, on your phones. It, it, it's kind of crazy, Microsoft strategy. And then you got to consider Switch. Uh, we've obviously been killing it with the rumor reports and the leaks and all that, and it just looks like somehow year four and year five of Switch might be bigger than all the prior years combined. We have, we have an open-world Pokemon game coming. Think about this. Open-world Pokemon Sequel to the best-selling Zelda game of all time. Donkey Kong getting reimagined. Metroid Prime 4 coming back. Likely next year, right? Think about just those games right there. And that's before considering we probably have a new 3D Mario coming. Maybe it's uh, Mario Odyssey 2. Maybe it's something else entirely different. But there's going to probably be a new Mario Kirby. They're looking to make the greatest Kirby game to ever exist, right? We're still getting the Pokemon remakes. You know, maybe not as hyped as they once were, but we're still getting Pokemon remakes this year. You know, we have Monster Hunter Stories 2. We just had Monster Hunter Rise, which is doing the kind of numbers the world was doing on multiple platforms, but just on Switch. And this is just the stuff we know about. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is in the works. Sure, there's a new Dragon Quest in the works as well, because Dragon Quest 11 killed it on all platforms, especially on Switch. Like, things are happening in this industry that are so exciting, and... We went through this whole year plus of COVID, and as we're starting to come out of it, as the country's opening back up, especially if you're fully vaccinated, whether you're anti-vax or not, I don't really give a crap. Uh, point is, things are opening back up, right? And as we come out, and as we try to give back to the community during E3, coming out of this, to put some smiles on people's faces, even if the game you want announced isn't announced at E3, because all the stuff we're hearing doesn't mean it's all happening at E3, right? So... Yeah, this is all exciting stuff, but where it looks like combined, in totality, this could be the greatest E3 ever, and it's a digital event. That's what kind of sucks, is because of COVID, it kind of put all these things on delay, so we didn't get a lot of big announcements in the last year, and now it feels like we're going to get a bunch of big announcements this summer, and it has me just, like, tingling a little bit inside, like, my, you know, getting goosebumps, because we've been waiting for Gamer Christmas. Like, this is... This is not your average E3. We didn't have E3 last year. This is a two-year build-up to this gamer Christmas. Two years. And as Nintendo fans, we know we've been waiting. They sprinkled announcements on social media. We had one Nintendo Direct in the last year and a half. One. And it was pretty good. We got Splatoon 3 dropped at the end. Out of nowhere. Nobody thought we, there was a chance we were even getting a new Splatoon this generation. And we got that. I didn't even bring that up earlier. Crazy. Mario Golf Super Rush looks incredible. The RPG mode looks better and better the more we see of it. Everything is lining up. Heck, even at my channel, we're growing at not a record pace, but at a very quick pace from now heading into E3. We're even getting big podcast guests coming up on Wednesday at 8 p.m. CT to 9.30 p.m. CT. We have our podcast being streamed live to the world, and we have Jeff Grubb coming on from VentureBeat. You know, the Jeff Grubb of the game mess, of the actual industry insider, the actual reporter, a video game journalist coming on our show. He wants to be on. This is in addition to great people like Andre's Restart and Game Over Jesse and HMK and all the rest that we throw on, Misclick Gaming, right? We always have the content creators, but now we have an actual journalist coming on our podcast. Who's next? Shigeru Miyamoto? I'm just pointing out that Things are going in a positive momentum, not just for us, but for gamers. And this is so exciting. I am more hyped for this E3 than I have been for even the very first E3 I attended in person, which why it was a special E3. Went as media to cover Breath of the Wild in 2016. Talk about a special E3. And I'm more hyped for this one. And I'm not even going to it. There's no in-person event. Yeah, here we are. 
covering E3 and making a bigger deal out of it than I think has ever been done before. Because you know what? Even if the games you want aren't announced and E3 sucks to you, if you tune in to us, you're going to have a good time. Gaming competitions, giveaways, great conversations, all the things you love about the channel and more. So I'm hyped. I hope you're hyped. I hope these sales uh, show why Nintendo fans should be incredibly excited. <laughs> we'll catch you in the next video.